Hey guys, Shane here, Figure Deck 3D Printing. Today we're going to look at Gizmo Dork Solid Blue PLA. So welcome back guys. I said we're going to do a review here of Gizmo Dork Solid Blue PLA. They actually did not give this to me for free, but they did offer me a substantial discount on it. When I was first starting out, I was like, well, you know, I, I guess I could do that. A lot of other companies did send them to me for free, but they did not. This was a Amazon coupon code that I was given. Let's open it up and take a look. First off, box super duper plain. The only thing on it is, you know, the UPC Gizmo Dorks 1.75 millimeter, solid blue, one kilogram, and some other little information on there. But aside from that, Super, super, I want to say chintzy, but uh, they really did not go far with their packaging. I'm guessing because it's just it's Amazon. I don't know if they sell this anywhere else, but I guess they didn't want anything fancy. Uh, I don't even say 3D filament like some of the really cheap ones do. But here it is. And also, keeping with it, this is, it looks like this is their own spool. I've never seen this uh, fully smooth spool before. Their logo is printed on the spool itself. Here on the other side, we have the same sticker that we saw on the box. And it is nice and tight, vacuum sealed, just the way it should be. Now, where is my knife? Ah, yes, here it is. I would like to note, there is no desk pack inside this bag. Mm, just check inside here real quick. Yeah, no, there is no desk pack inside with the filament. That is a first. So I wonder, since I've had this filament for several months now, when I actually did purchase it back in, oh, I don't know, September, October time frame, uh, I'm hoping that everything is still okay. It should be, because it's in an airtight bag, but they also have this cellophane wrap on the spool itself to hold the filament in there. That is a really nice blue. I'll give them that. Very nice blue. The wind is very nice. It is a tight wind. Can't move too much of it, which is good. The spool is sturdy, and it looks like it is uh, glued together, actually. There's a little bit of drip of glue. I can't I can't get an angle on that. There actually is a drip of glue for however this spool is put together. It's solid, though. That's good. Feels like PLA. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume that this is going to print like every other PLA that I've touched uh, as the <clears throat> run-of-the-mill PLAs. But, I mean, either way, I do like the blue. This is a different blue than I've had before, and I am looking forward to printing with this. So, let's throw it on a couple of the printers and see what happens. All right, so you saw the time lapses, what they were. Let's look at the most important one, which is gonna be Lapras. This is a nice, huge print. It actually is not very tall because of her wingspan. I probably could have cocked it 45 degrees, but that would have made for a weird time lapse. It could have got a, a little bit, I probably had maybe an inch more, so I could have probably brought up another 15 millimeters. Maybe it is just a amazingly wide print that's not very tall, but let's see how it performed. Bottom layer was kind of crappy. I've been having a little bit of issue with the FT5, but I let the bottom layer go. It's not really the FT5, it's also this filament. I will say right off the bat that getting this to stick has been an issue for me. It didn't want to stick to glass. It didn't want to stick to print bite. It didn't want to stick to the PEI that I just got in. I don't know, I didn't try build tack. I probably should have, but I just didn't. I said, you know what, screw it. Put the glass back on put down some glue and it stuck just fine. 
I don't like doing that, but this film it just gave me a lot of issues with that, a lot of headaches. It took me a lot longer to print this stuff than I thought it would. But um, anyways, let's dive into the prints and see how they came out. Okay, first up we have Lapras. So as you can see, it's a very, very large print. It took almost the entire width of my build plate. Uh, height was not so much a problem. I mean, you can see it turned out pretty well. Here on the top, there are a few parts that didn't fill in all the way. You can see they're on the head as well, a little bit there. That is just because of the extreme nature of some of these angles. I had four top layers, but that doesn't necessarily always matter. You will get gaps like this when doing a hollow print. This was printed with three perimeters, four top, four bottom, 0% infill. Like uh, this is again, this is one to add to my Pokemon army of zero infill Pokemon that are as big as I can print on the FT5. This came out pretty well. A few under extrusion parts, so that's probably gonna be an inconsistency in the filament diameter. And you can see there's a little one right here. There is another few around here, but overall it was fairly consistent. But again, I did have those few little spots in here. Uh, you can see some of it actually on this side where some of the layers are a little bit low, uh, further in than others, which meaning not enough plastic came out to compensate for them. Oh, there's, this is where it was right here on this back spike, we'll call it there. Next up, these are some parts for the LED stand that I was creating. So this first one was just a test run of a part. I found it on Thingiverse, but I didn't like the way it was, so I created it my own. I also wanted I also wanted to be able to mod it myself, so I had to recreate it because their STL was horrible, and it came out okay. Um, it's strong, which is good, and it came out accurate, so not too much swelling, but you know, bottom line, this one was good. On the Lapras, not so much. But so I took this and I added it to this part here, so this flat piece here actually would sit the LED panel sits right across it here, and then this would mount onto the top of a light stand. You just put a bolt through it here, and I would bolt it to here. But aside, this wasn't the best option because I didn't want to bolt it because there was nowhere actually to bolt it to because of the way I had the LEDs on the uh, sheet of metal. So on the final version I did, I actually cut this off, used a hot shoe mount, and used uh, took these holes out and reduced the size of this a little bit, and just used. 3M uh, double-sided tape, that really thick gooey stuff that sticks like a mother, and that ended up being well, but that was in a different filament. But either way, uh, top layers in this were good, bottom layers in this were yeah, you know, again, it's, you can see I had some issues and it was just bugging me. I could not get it to go down properly. I over extruded the bottom layer like crazy, no matter what I did, it would not change. I put a different filament on, it worked out just fine. But uh, anyways, the top layers were good, the sidewalls are nice uh, on both of these. So that's not bad. Next, I printed this rose. This is gonna be actually part of my wife's Mother's Day gift that I'm going to be making her. And this is gonna be a bouquet of 3D printed flowers. So I'm doing blue and red roses and they turned out pretty well. But you can see right here, we had some type of issue here and I have to go back to the time lapse and see if I can even tell what it was, but probably not. It's just a very inconsistent layer. And I think it was a, again, inconsistent in the diameter of the filament so it caused it to under extrude oh one layer maybe two layers in there also some weirdness going on on the sides here almost under extrusion in certain areas when it would start a new layer and that uh, i can't really account for why that happened it's just very strange bottom layer was nice but this you know came out well there is room for improvement but again i, I think there is some inconsistencies in the roll finally i have the parts here for the new spool holder for my Delta printer. And these turned out pretty good. Uh, there was a little bit of, I guess we can call it stringing, but just the layers did not lay on top of each other inside of this. There's a few of the threads. It's also, it's pretty common in threads, but uh, I did cut most of them out or they just kind of fell out when threading this on. This part, the bolt part came out fantastic. There were no issues on that at all. And the 608 ZZ bearing fit in just right. And this slides on there real nice and easy. So there's that, and then this is one of the mounts. Well, this is technically the mount that goes on the extrusion. Two M5 bolts hold this down. You can put this on there and then that on top, or you can use this one, which has a anti-backlash arm, which can sit on there like so, which also works out well. They're a little bit loose. I think that was how it was made. And this one on the top, there is some under extrusion of the top layer, which I was not too happy with. Some of the other parts came out fine. I didn't change anything. So again, an inconsistency because the top layers of this are perfect. Top layers of this one are perfect. Top layers of this one are, they're doggone close to being perfect. 98, 99% right there. 
This one we're looking at like 90% uh, accuracy. So that's not really great. Uh, and it was printed alongside with this one, which has an okay top layer, but again, some are missing. So that's not uh, great. Final part to this is the filament guide. I'll have a little bit of drooping here where that bridge was. So clearly it did not cool fast enough. I do have cooling on the FT5 for this and it prints upright like so. Again, here on top and right here, actually you can see there's some inconsistency Whoop, right there, sorry, yeah. With how it was able to totally fill in that top layer. So these were all a great test of different types of printing with this filament. I also wanna add here, uh, so it's hard to see with it, but there is a significant gap in here of where the filament is. So that confuses me because the one side is completely flat. This side has a significant divot in it, and I don't think that's the STL. And I don't think my printer shifted because how can it shift on one side? It goes in, it goes in a circle like this around it. How does it dent in one side but not the other? And the other's consistently flat. So I want to go and look at the file and find out, but I, I think this thing was straight when I put it in there. I didn't see this this divot here, and there are some also, some under extrusion parts and some over, you can see the bump here. It's over extrusion here, uh, going down here, under extrusion again. So the, the roll was not horribly inconsistent, but it is inconsistent. Okay, so let's talk results. Overall, everything printed. Everything printed fairly well, but there are clear inconsistencies in the roll on the diameter of the filament. So that's how you're gonna see layer skips, not layer skips, but just how one part here was, you know, not extruded properly. But if you go to the other side, which is on the same round, it's perfectly fine. And you can tell different parts here with under extrusion. You can just tell in parts of this part here, the over extrusion parts. So clearly there is a greater deviation than the 0.05 that most companies uh, strive for. And that's just, you know, if you're printing for money, like if you do 3D hubs, that's not good because you're gonna have to reprint this because the, somebody didn't pay for this. They paid for a, a well printed part. And if that's what your goal is here with what a lot of people do with 3D printing, this is not your filament. If you're looking for something, I mean, not even at that. I mean, you can get so many other filaments for cheaper than this that are consistent in their role. I mean, heck, I've had h and plastic, toner plastic, uh, Proto Paradigm, Hatchbox, Inland, all of them sub $25 per roll that print better than this. If this was just this roll, I'm sorry to that but I, I just can't recommend that you would buy this and hope to get consistently great prints because I have many prints here. You know, granted this spool holder was all one whole big thing, but this was printed in multiple parts. This nut and bolt was printed as one. This was printed as one. These three parts printed as one. Both of these printed as one separate. And then I had the great big Lapras as one great big print. And each one of them had issues in them. I know it's not my printer because I mean, look how many filaments I've tested now and they all come out really, really good with the good filaments. You know, again, to, to highlight it all, they did give me a discount in Amazon to purchase this filament. So it was purchased with my own money with a discount from them on the means that I would give them a video review and I'm giving it and I'm going to tell you to stay away from this filament. Again, I apologize if it's just this one roll, but this is the role that I got. This is the role that any of you would buy as a normal consumer. Because of inconsistencies, that is no bueno in my world of wanting to get the perfect prints. And especially when you're doing a giant print like Lapras or any of the other big ones up here on my shelf, it needs to look good. <laughs> it just does. So uh, if you guys are willing to pick some of this filament up, there's links down below for it. And that is that. If you guys like this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Let me know why. Maybe this filament works out for you, but it didn't for me. I'd love to hear from you about that. Multiple ways you can help out the channel. You can subscribe right here. Help me out via Patreon there. A dollar more really helps me out. Uh, if you want to also help out, there's a ton of affiliate links down below for things like Amazon, Maker Geeks, eBay. Use those, update your bookmarks. You can download the STL files down below. These talented artists that created all of these files. I thank you guys for what you do because I am a horrible, horrible modeler. So thank you guys. And as always, happy printing.